Hey, you bodacious bees, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking a little bit more about work. I, you know, I kind of like to talk about work. I've been working for God knows how long, and hopefully someday I'll stop working so I can enjoy my life for a change. So, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. Today we're talking a little bit about something that be became popularized in the 1960s. Uh, I mean, it was like manager X, manager Y, and that's how micromanaging got started. It used to be it was just the boss, the manager, that was it. It was the boss, the manager, the employees. That was basically it. And then it got more popularized in the 70s and then it exploded in the 80s. Now, basically it used to be manager, um, owner, manager, and maybe a supervisor, and then the employees, and that was it. If there was discipline involved, it was in one of those three ste ste steps, steps. But now, it's just like uh, the old, uh, the joke goes when somebody uh, sees uh, somebody going out and working on a road and making a sidewalk. You have one worker that's flinging a shovel, and you got six people picking their nose and watching you dig the hole. That's pretty much what it is right now. And that's why most people don't want to return to the office. They don't want the micromanaging again. When when people are working remote, they deal with pretty much one person. They pretty much deal with maybe two people, but that's it. They don't have a camera. Well, yeah, they have a camera now, but they don't have a camera on their, on their back and 19 people telling them what to do. You don't have uh, Lisa, the manager from uh, one department, coming over and saying, hey, uh, I need you to do this paperwork. And then Mike coming from another department saying, hey, you don't look busy. Here's some more work to do. That's, uh, you know, that, that plays a huge part in uh, the stress levels and the workloads. And the reason why people are fighting so hard not to come back to the office. But let's go into some place where the micromanaging is insanely strong. And what it can actually do. Dang, I got an indention on my forehead. My forehead is so dry. I'm trying to get that all fixed. Looks like I got a cut right here. Alright, so back on, back on track. I don't mean to babble, but hey. That's what YouTube's about. So, micromanaging in most cases is just a power level. So let's say in the public transit agency, you have your uh, your GM, and then he has his executives, directors, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then you go down to... Uh, and then you go down to the whole, you know, wheel down to the bus driver. So now the bus driver has to answer to the super to the road supervisor. The bus driver has to answer to the training supervisor. The uh, the bus driver has to answer to the station agent, which is a supervisor. The bus driver has to answer to scheduling, which is a supervisor. The bus driver has to answer to the dispatcher, which is a supervisor. Then they have to answer to a manager, a garage manager, which is a supervisor. So that's six. I have my hand on a on a rod, so I can't. I don't have seven fingers. Six, seven fingers. So you have a garage manager, and then you have the. Uh, the bus manager. Uh, let's see here. And then you also have the security manager, which is eight. Uh, then you have the schedulers, which is nine. And I, uh, oh yeah, and then you have HR, which is 10. And I think that's about it. So they have, so one bus driver has 10 supervisors slash managers managing them. Now we're going to get into number 11 and number 12 with the way TriMet in Portland does. And that is 
The cameras is the Nauter manager. The microphones is Nauter manager. And the customers are now their manager. So now a bus driver has 13 managers for one person. That is why the uh, employment rating on Indeed is now sitting at almost two and a half. And it's going to keep on going down. Now, we're going to take a little, we're going to take one of these uh, managers and we're going to put them into the supreme being. The supreme being would be HR. Now, it used to be HR was supposed to be the advocate for the bus driver to make sure that all the laws are properly followed and there's no discrimination, and no toxicity, uh, the ADA laws are being followed, and, I mean, the list goes on. But no, the, this, the HR manager is now the jury, the judge, and the executioner. Plus, the way that they do it is like the banker on the on deal or no deal. You never see them. And they've never driven a bus. They have never, uh, I don't think they've ever ridden a bus. So, you have the supreme being. Now, HR gets their, gets their information from complaints. They get their information from third-party complaints. They get their information from uh, customer complaints. They get their information from complaints from training. And, uh, yeah. And then they pull everything off the video, and I know they always go and fish for more. Because, well, guess what? You have a camera eye on you at all times while you're driving a bus. Now, here at the, here at the airport, it's the same way. You have audio, you have vis video, and it's all trained on you. So, the thing is, is what they assume goes. And you used to be able to, if you went back into the 90s, before they took the right to strike away from the bus, bus drivers, it used to be that management had to go through the union to be able to go to the employee before anything happened. Well, the union gave up their right to strike, and guess what? The union can't say nothing. They just sit there and fill out the time slip, twiddle their thumbs because they can't say nothing. You have no rights as a driver at TriMet. And this is a factor for a lot of other places, as I've read through many uh, message boards, that micromanagement gets so big-headed that the toxicity level in the workplace is insane. They need to get rid of all these billions of managers because the digital era has plenty, can can do plenty of work, probably more work than what everybody else can, more accurately, tone down the, the fat from the management, and focus a little bit more on the employee, maybe a little bit more on the customer service. Who knows, they may have been a little burned out, okay, we'll work with them. I remember when I went in and I said, you know, I feel a little burned out. Oh, go see a psychologist. I've been feeling a little down in dumps. Oh, go see a psychologist. We're not here to help you. That's exactly what the manager told me. I said, oh, I just quit smoking. I'm, I'm a little on the edge. Oh, okay, you quit smoking. Go see a psychologist. What? Why can't I work with you? Oh, that's not our job. Okay. Can I get a little bit of advice? No, you need to go over and see the psychologist. You get three freebie visits to see a psychologist. What? What happened with managers now? What happened with quality managers and supervisors 
treating people like human beings. Nope, you're a number. So when a company treats a person like a number, that's it, that's the end of it. You don't have a company anymore. You have a prison. That's all there is to it. When you micromanage people to the point where it's bullying, harassment, and just just plain toxic, you know what? It's bullying and it's unnecessary. No wonder people don't want to go and work for you. But until people start learning how to create a family instead of a war zone, the revolving door of employment is just going to keep going 400 miles an hour. But here's the other thing, and I'll probably do another video on it. i uh, got to do a little bit more research to be able to put this together. And uh, so as I'm closing this, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, employment ratings at companies are actually starting to tell the truth. So we're going we're gonna to take a little bit of a look into that, and we're going to do a little bit more deep dive into management and what a manager is supposed to be. You know, I've turned down manage, manager jobs and positions before because I know how toxic it can get. So has anybody here uh, experienced managers that uh, could be, or that are good enough to, that you could actually call them your brother? Heck, I remember managers and employees that went out and shot pool with each other after work and had a couple of beers. So, just let me know in the comment section below uh, what you th think about this video and what you've experienced with management and supervisors and what you think about uh, micromanaging, you know, that type of stuff. And uh, again, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. Till next time, keep on rocking.